Good for America. Time to go head to head, and John Stossel doing that. He says that outsourcing jobs is good for America. How is that, John? Because that's the dynamism that creates new jobs. We, we've lost 360 million jobs since 1982, 1992. But we've created 380 million jobs during that time. And that extra 20 million jobs comes from the freedom to send those jobs overseas. We save money on those workers. That gives us more to do, to do new things with. The fear is that the cheaper labor gets abroad versus relatively expensive labor in this country, John, that we're going to see a lot more of this, and it will come back to boomerang. What do you think? People have always worried about that, but it hasn't happened. The average wage rate has been steadily going up, adjusted for inflation. I mean, free trade is good for jobs, too. And the biggest outsourcers, a Dartmouth study found, were the biggest job creators. So in manufacturing, the ones who fear that the manufacturing base in this country leaves this country, what do you say? Bye. I mean, wh there's nothing wonderful about manufacturing jobs. And, and I think if you look at what we want for our own kids, that should answer the question. We don't want them working in a factory where the work is underpaid, low, no, not underpaid, sorry, where the work is very hard, it may be uncomfortable. We want them taking jobs as engineers, biologists. We, we think the service jobs are good for our kids. I think it's great if people in other countries want to manufacture things and, and we can import it and pay for it with our service jobs. You know, John, those who are against outsourcing say when a country loses its ability to manufacture stuff, to make stuff, whether it's in a factory floor or something close to it, the country loses its dominance. What do you think? Where, where's the evidence? I, I, we can trade for the goods we need, and uh, I just don't think it's true. So you don't see, for example, that all of a sudden we're at the mercy for all these things from countries like China or India, and down the road we have problems with China or India that we haven't screwed ourselves? Well, we have if that's the only country with whom we trade, but fortunately we have a lot of trading partners, and we buy things from a lot of people, and that protects us. Very interesting view. John, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll start today with a look at major corporations here in America. To some, they're what makes or breaks the economy here. Higher ups at these corporations seem to have convinced many Americans and many political people in power here in Washington that what's good for them is good for America. So naturally, they've asked for help, a handout if you will, in the form of, you guessed it, tax cuts. This will help them, they say, stay competitive with scary China and India. But shh, let's not talk about the fact that many companies have outsourced jobs to those very same countries. Uh, the GOP decided they were going to do something called a pledge to America. And uh, that is, and they've unveiled that today. And that's their promise to America if they uh, rewin the House, the Senate, etc. Now, the way they gathered ideas for that, it was actually very good. It was, you know, very grassroots, actually net roots in a lot of ways. It's called America Speaking Out, and they solicited uh, advice. And about, apparently a million different people, uh, or they got a million comments on it uh, from a great number of people. Fantastic. They're using the Internet, the series of tubes that Ted Stevens talked about, and they're reaching out to American people. Now, it's their own folks, and they might come up with some crazy ideas, but uh, hey, it's a step in the right direction, right? A little bit more accountability. Well, uh, you know, the thing that came in number one, the issue that came in number one, was actually very good. See, that's why if you actually ask people, you might be surprised what they get. And uh, as we've told you on a number of issues, the Republican voters are actually not with the Republican politicians. So what came in number one? Uh, it was to make sure that uh, we do not give any more tax breaks to companies that are outsourcing jobs. Now, we're not preventing them from outsourcing jobs. It's a free country. It's a free world. But we just don't want to give them tax breaks or tax incentives to encourage that. Now, that came in, number one, because it makes so much sense. I think Democrats can agree to that. Republicans can agree to that. So we'll probably get this thing done, right? Because it came in, number one, for the Republicans. And the Republican Party had originally been in favor of that proposal. And guess what? The Democrats are now introducing a bill that would do exactly that, okay? No, if you cr create jobs here in the U.S., you, you, the jobs that used to be abroad but are now uh, relocated to the U.S., we're going to give you tax breaks. But if you're taking jobs that used to be in the U.S. and exporting them outside, we're not going to give you tax breaks. Come on, who's going to disagree with that, right? 
Of course, you know who, right? The Republican Party. Totally against it, uh, and will be obstructing it and blocking it to make sure it doesn't happen. It's number one on your agenda, according to your voters. What happened? Oh, no, not buying it. Now, why? Because that would hurt the real constituency of Republican politicians, the richest people and corporations in the country. Oh, no, 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 you can't touch those corporations. I need to give them more of your tax breaks. I don't care if they hire anywhere else as long as they contribute to me. Perfect example, Representative Brady. Uh, it's Kevin Brady, Republican of Texas. And somebody's going to ask him on camera about it, and his answer is awesome. Let's watch. As of, of, of last week, uh, I don't know the exact date, uh, but the second highest idea um, voted up by popular vote was to end tax breaks for companies that ship jobs overseas. Um, do you expect uh, something like that to be included with the new contract that's unveiled tomorrow? You know, um, I haven't seen what. Can you tell me what exactly that tax provision is? Because right now, the ones we've seen from the Democrats in the White House actually penalize U.S. companies trying to sell and compete overseas. So they do just the opposite. These tax breaks that they're trying to supposedly uh, reform actually ships our jobs overseas if, if the president succeeds. So I think they're, Total uh, they're very ignorant about how the tax code hurts us as we try to compete. So... And then there, he was asking him yesterday, do you think it will be revealed today that that will be part of your pledge to America since it's coming in in the top two at that time, right? And, of course, he said, no, it will not be in our pledge. They're trying to, did you notice what he said? He said they're trying to hurt companies that are trying to sell and compete overseas. In other words, companies that send jobs o overseas, they're trying to hurt them, right? No, 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 they're not trying to hurt them. They just don't want to give them tax breaks to hire overseas because we want them hiring over here. And at the end, he told you, of course, what his real plan is. Quote, all that has to do is lower taxes. The one and only priority for Republicans. Lower taxes for our really, really rich friends and corporations. And by the way, the Pledge to America was unveiled today. It did not have that provision that was at this point number one among their voters their uh, constituents, their voters, uh, and their readers, okay? Not only did it not have it, guess what the main policy proposal was? Now, if you can't guess this, you just haven't been following along. Of course, it was to cut taxes for everybody, including, and most especially, top 2% of the country and multinational corporations, no matter where they ship the job. Republicans. Pathetic. Now, in a 53 to 45 vote today, the Senate blocked a new bill that would have punished U.S. firms that export jobs and rewarded those who brought them back home. Entitled the Creating American Jobs and Ending Offshoring Act, it would have provided payroll tax relief to companies which hire employees domestically during a three-year period, all beginning on September 22nd. And the billion-dollar cost of that tax cut? Well, that would have been partially offset by tax increases on the companies that do continue to move their jobs overseas. You know who's against this bill? The United States Chamber of Commerce. Those, that's the right-wing business organization that actually rules the Republican Party, that actually owns the Republican Party, and their bosses, the Republican uh, Chamber of Commerce, is the boss of the Republican Party, and they told them, I don't give a damn what your stupid poll said, or your website, or your stupid pledge. No, 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 we're going to make more money offshoring uh, jobs so you're going to vote against that bill, and you're going to kill it. And uh, wh why'd they do that? Um, because uh, the Chamber of Commerce, you got those quotes from me, Jesus? L let me show you a letter that the Chamber of Commerce sent uh, the Senate in opposition to this bill. Okay, go ahead, put that up. Um, so it, they say in their letter, uh, the concept of economic growth is not a zero-sum game. Replacing a job that is based in another country with a domestic job does not stimulate economic growth or enhance the competitiveness of American worldwide companies. Leave it up for a second. You see that? Replacing a job that is based in another country with a domestic job does not stimulate economic growth. What they're saying is, yeah, yeah of course we're offshoring your jobs. But telling us to stop doing that doesn't help the economic growth of our executives. <laughs> I mean, uh, the American economy. Wait, of course.
course it doesn't help the American economy if you move jobs abroad. A anybody with two bits of sense can tell you that. <laughs> but they say, oh, well, look, it doesn't help our bottom line, and our bottom line is the equivalent of the American economy, and if we're hiring Filipinos instead of you, so what? We just got richer. Ha ha! And we, got, and we already bought the Republican Party, and they did our bidding. It's gone. It's, now, if that weren't clear enough for you, now here's uh, Tom Donahue. He was the uh, head of the Chamber of Commerce. This is a letter he wrote in 2004. Go ahead and put that up, Aces. So uh, he's going to tell us, yeah, look, we might have lost some jobs. So what? They're just American jobs, and what do we care? We're multinational corporations. Let's read you the quote here. He says, the outsourcing deal over three or four or five years, and the two or three sets of numbers are only going to be, you know, maybe two, maybe three million jobs, maybe four. So if we lose three, four million American jobs, what difference does it make? You don't understand. Everybody in the Chamber of Commerce just got a little richer. Oh, you lost your jobs. Who cares? Who cares? Republican Party, deal with these riffraff. Go, go. I don't want to hear from them anymore, okay? Uh, I, I plan to get another million dollars in bonuses, right? So he just said, oh, yeah, I don't mind losing three, four million American jobs. You need to add about 150,000 jobs a month in the United States to cover population growth. So what we have is a falling participation rate, that is the number of people working compared to the number of uh, adult citizens in the, in the population as a whole, is that in order to collect taxes, you have to have a fairly decent percentage of the people working. And when that percentage goes down, it becomes much more difficult to collect the revenue that the government needs to operate. One of the things that I uh, sort of highlighted is that the number of poor people in the U.S. is millions higher than previously known, with one in six Americans, many of them 65 and older, struggling in poverty. And this is due to things like rising medical care and other costs. Um, what's the answer here? What, what do we do? Well, we have to stop looking. The, the medical care situation in the United States can be solved by stopping the medical device, drug, and establishment people from cost shifting onto the American citizen the cost of development that then get enjoyed by everybody else in the world. And we do that today. Uh, we also have a major problem with illegal immigrants and people who are uninsured. They go into a hospital, they have a heart attack, and you get the bill for their heart attack, essentially, when you come in later on and you're able to pay. We have to clean those two things up, and until we do, we can't solve this problem. And as the boomers retire, it's going to become more and more acute, because today, it, the five-cent aspirin costs $30 in a hospital, and it's all due to these cost shifts. So this is a problem that nobody wants to address. Certainly this issue of health care, one uh, we expect to see coming up here in Washington in the House of Representatives early next week. What do you think is the conversation uh, that's not being held in regards to health care, especially when it comes to paying for those people who don't have health insurance? Well, it's, it again comes down to shifting of costs. And nobody wants to talk about cutting off illegal immigrants that come into this country and are pregnant eight and a half months, for example, and have a child and no money to pay for it. Um, nobody wants to talk about the fact that in other countries you can buy drugs that cost $20 a pill here for $2. Um, and we have set in place the policies and procedures that allow corporations and other parts of the healthcare system to do this.